Welcome to The Drawing Board, the show that makes science less about this and more about this. I'm your host, David Franklin, and today we're going to be talking about some pretty fantastic stuff. Today we're going to take a look at what genetic mutations are, how they happen, what they're capable of doing to your body, and the forest powers are really possible. Genetic mutations are not fiction, they're fact. Every single day your body is tasked with repairing itself, which means your DNA helicase goes to unzip your genes. It takes two strands, splits it in half, it matches up, repairs, and pieces together two different strands of DNA from the original one. And sometimes the RNA messes up and puts the wrong thing in place, which isn't necessarily dangerous. For example, blue eyes are one of the most common genetic mutations that exist. And as those mutations are passed down from generation to generation, nature will decide if it's beneficial or not. Blue eyes may not have had any obvious things that made people better at surviving, but there are purple eyes, which allows women to have less menstrual cycles and less body hair, which in itself is kind of a superpower. So the question is, could traveling into another planet or dimension give an individual more chance of having a mutation and therefore superpower? Well, so far I don't know if we have any proof that mutations can cause superpowers, but absolutely freaking lootly next to chemicals that are more radioactive than others causes DNA to break down faster and more hectically. So that means the RNA has more work to do and is more likely to make mistakes, more likely for your body to mutate, and therefore maybe kind of get superpowers. Probably not. Just because it's possible doesn't mean you want to be jumping into any pits of toxic waste or hanging out in your x-ray facilities to try and get mutation, but more likely you're probably gonna die. So don't do it, because if you do, you'll probably get some of this and I'll probably get some of this. So, could each of the four superpowers exist? First up is the human torch, and let's go ahead and assume that some sort of a mutation made the body able to survive the immense heat that comes from flames. We do know that certain organisms like bacteria are able to survive in extremely intense environments, so yes, living things can survive in those environments. Let's move on. So how would the body catch on fire in the first place? Well, your central nervous system, which travels from your brain down your spine and along your body, does transmit electric signals. I suppose that some sort of mutation would allow you to transfer not just the spark through your forearm, but possibly on the outside of your arm that could act as a source of ignition. But that also means that the body would have to have something to ignite. And human skin and pretty much anything organic isn't exactly good for that if it wants to stay alive. But that means that the body would need something to catch on fire rather than its own skin. So as disgusting as it might be, every body and organism breaks down the nutrients that it puts into its body differently. That's why a seagull's poop is white and yours isn't. So why am I mentioning this? Well, a great way for some sort of flammable to be spread all over the entire surface of the body would be it were able to sweat out some sort of alcohol. And since sweat is just a form of diluted urine being leaked through your body, I know, it's gross, that would be possible if the body were able to take in some sort of nutrient ferment it, and then leak that out outside of its body like an alcohol. So yes, the human torch, I suppose, is possible. But it's not exactly reliable, because just like you and I, fire needs oxygen. So if I were the human torch and I wanted to light my arm on fire, that would be all fine and dandy. I could keep the fire over here, my mouth over here, and things would go well for me. However, if I were to yell flame on and completely ignite my body, I wouldn't be able to breathe any oxygen because all the oxygen would be eaten up in here before it could even go through my mouth, and that's considering that the oxygen wasn't ripped out of my lungs by the fire in the first place, which would be an even more horrific way to die. So if you didn't die from the burning, you'd almost definitely die from the suffocation. After the break, we're gonna discuss the other three, but first, we're gonna show you how to impress your friends at a party by becoming the Human Torch. Because alcohol burns at such a low level, it's actually able to burn on the surface of your body without catching your body on fire. So if you're ever at a party and want to impress your friends, just soak your hands in a hand sanitizer or alcohol, light them on fire, and yell, flame on. And before we get back to the show, this is the part of the show where I like to remind our audience not to do anything stupid. If you're gonna do this at home, use protection, be safe, and take every precaution necessary to make sure that you and everyone else around you is safe and free from harm. Seriously, this is literally the definition of playing with fire. Don't do it. Because if you do do something dangerous and hurt yourself or other people, you'll probably get some of this. The penalty is death! And I'll probably get some of this. This honor on you? 
Dishonor on your cow. Dishonor on your whole family. Being as flexible as you ever want, it would be super cool and awesome, amazing, and kind of sexy superpower. But is it practical? One of the fundamental laws of the universe is the conservation of mass and energy. So if Mr. Fantastic were to stretch out his arm and do any real stretching, his arm would get thinner and thinner and thinner and thinner and weaker and weaker because it had less muscle per square inch that eventually he'd be weaker than Greece's economy. Which means if Mr. Fantastic were to stretch out his arm, he'd have to weigh the same amount unless his superpower were gaining more mass. But that didn't really seem to be listed on his resume. Well, thank you for submitting your resume for being the superhero of this city. It says here, see you're organized, adaptable, good, flexible. Well, you know, I just don't, I don't see how you're, oh, I see what you mean. Well, you have the job. Next up is the thing, and first of all, I'd like to say, is it really necessary for everyone in the four to have some sort of superpower equivalent with someone from The Incredibles? I mean, really, it's not like there's five superpowers in the world. We can all be more creative than that. So first, we're gonna go ahead and assume that super strength is possible. Let's assume that there is some sort of a mutation that allowed your body to produce more ATP. ATP is the chemical compound that your body produces that gives your muscles energy. So let's assume that there's some sort of a genetic mutation that allowed your body to produce ATP. ATP faster than some sort of an ADD kid in a candy factory, then yeah, sure, I suppose super strength is possible. And if you happen to be made completely out of rock, I suppose you could even hold yourself up. However, rocks aren't exactly known for their ability to bend or twist, so the only way that rock is really known to be able to move at all is if it's molten or partially molten, which means it has to be liquid and melt. So if I'm the thing and I need to rotate my arm, my rotator cuff would have to turn to lava and then hopefully hold together, not drip to the ground so that my arm would fall off because that would be the dumbest superpower ever. Oh boy. Well, I suppose invisibility is possible. We've already developed suits that are able to make people invisible. They have 360 degree cameras and when you wear it, it'll project an image from this side of your body on this side of your body so it looks like you're looking through and seeing that side. So it kind of mimics invisibility but couldn't organic being be invisible, that one's a little bit tougher. Is possibly a genetic mutation could make your atoms, or perhaps you could be built out of a sort of atom that appeared to be invisible. And if there are any invisible atoms out there, for obvious reasons, it's really hard to find them. So for now, I pass no judgment. As far as telekinesis and the ability to control things with your mind, if she had the ability to manipulate atomic charges and control electromagnetic fields, then yeah, it's totally possible. Not that people or mutations could give you that power, but if they could, it's possible. Though we have machines that can manipulate electromagnetic fields, we don't really know that people can, but electromagnetic fields simply mean that when you turn on the electricity on this sort of a magnet, all of a sudden it has more electronic charge that's able to manipulate the charges around it. So if she were somehow able to, one, control electromagnetic fields, and two, transmit more electrons, making an object more negative, or take away a lot of electrons, making it more positive in charge, she could theoretically control whether she wanted to push or push an object towards her. Thank you so much for watching today's episode of The Drawing Board. If you like what you saw, go ahead and like and share this with a friend or a family member. If you want to see more, go ahead and hit the subscribe button and make sure to tune in next week on Thursday when we're going to be talking about elastic collisions. We're going to test GOAT Simulator and we're going to build an entire trampoline out of note cards. And if anyone has any sort of recommendations for topics you'd like us to discuss, games or movies you'd like us to review and say if they're possible or not, or if you have any sort of build challenges, we'd love to take them on and let us know about those in the comment section below. Also, I'd like to remind our audience not to play with fire because if you do, you might end up like this. I do. And then we'll have to go like this. You should probably put that fire out first. <laughs> I can't wait. This is so nerve wracking, dude. Same time or both? Holy crap. At the same time or both? You're going to do one and I'm going to light the other. Okay. Are you ready? Yeah. Okay. <laughs> oh, how was that? It was scary, and then it was okay. I burnt myself. Not horribly. Did but I, I felt burnt that. I... This is the part of the uh, show where I like to tell everyone watching not to do this at home. If you're going to try this, please be uh, as safe as possible. We had a pool here, but seriously, uh, even though it's not going to burn your skin directly, directly, it is going to transfer heat. So seriously, it's better that you just don't do it all. Just don't do it. He's the exception, though. I'm not wearing hockey pads.